Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to part 10, our finale for the Moai series. If you haven't been following the series up to this point, I strongly suggest you pause here and go back and at least scan through the previous videos so that you're caught up on what we're talking about. If you're not familiar with the Pio Poly Moai, I do have a link down in the description that will take you to Pio Poly's website so that you can learn more about the Moai SLA printer. If you are interested in picking one up, I have both a Matter Hackers affiliate link as well as a link to where you can purchase that direct from Pio Poly also down in the description. So leading up to this point, when we finished episode 9, I had just completed the first test print. Today, we're going to wrap things up. So let's do it. Okay, it's time to talk about what to do after you print and how to take care of your Moai. So in today's episode, we're going to first talk briefly about post-processing your print after you pull it out to fully cure the resin. And then we're gonna talk briefly about how to take care of your resin, how long you can leave it out, as well as basic maintenance that you need to do on your Moai to keep it running in tip-top condition. And a little bit on how to keep it clean as well. So I'm going to glove up here and we're going to go ahead and get this part off of the build plate. Okay, so whenever you're handling the build plate and resin, you always want to make sure that you have gloves on and that it's not coming in contact with your skin any more than possible. Now, to do basic post-processing, there's three things that you're going to need. You're going to need a bowl or a bucket of water, a bowl or a bucket of either ethanol or 90% or stronger isopropyl alcohol, aka IPA, and you're going to either need a very bright sun or some sort of a UV curing bucket. I opted to build a very low cost budget uh, curing bucket with UV LEDs inside and I will be showing you that in a future video. So for now we're going to start off by taking the top off of this and we're going to use the scraper that's included with the Moai to try to bump this off the build plate, get it loose, and then we're going to dunk it into the alcohol. You're going to agitate it for about 30 seconds. We're going to go ahead and pull it out of there and then we're going to dunk it in the water you're going to start seeing some of the resin washing off of it there and the water is going to get a little bit milky. You're going to want to do it there. Now you want to avoid handling your part any more than you have to on the part that's your actual model. Um, handle it by the supports or something that you're going to be snipping away later. Okay, we're going to go back into the alcohol and I'm going to shake that again for about 30 seconds and we're going to do this for five or six times until we get any of the resin that was left clinging to the part after it came out of the vat off. Okay, that should be our last pass there. Now, if you're going to be doing this frequently, a lot of people like to invest in an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, 
you can pick them up depending on the size of the parts in the that you're going to be printing and what you want to clean. You can pick those up off Amazon anywhere from about $75 to about $200 depending on the size and the quality. Uh, but that does a much better job of getting the resin off, especially if you have complicated parts. In this case, it looks like we got pretty much everything out. So I'm going to go ahead and close off the IPA. We're going to set that aside. I'm going to take a paper towel here and wipe off my workbench. Now we're going to come back to that IPA later, but for now we just want it out of the way. And the ring is going to go into our curing bucket. I'm just going to set that in the middle there. We're going to fire up the UV lights on it. And then I'm going to put my lid back on. And we're going to set this aside for about an hour, hour and a half to allow it time to cure via the UV light. And at this point, I can pull these gloves off. Okay, so let me set this aside out of the way. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about maintenance on your Moai itself. As you can see, I have the other camera there pointing inside, and you'll notice that I put a cover on the vat. That is a 3D model that can be printed, and it's available on Thingiverse, and I will include the link to that down below. It's not required, and you can actually keep your resin in the vat, in the printer, as long as the doors are closed to keep the UV away from it uh, for roughly about a month. If you need to pour that out to change colors or change to a different resin, ideally you would pour that into an extra bottle that is either an empty bottle that you've already washed out and is clean and ready to go uh, so that it's black and it's, it's UV proof, or worst case, pour it back into the bottle that it came from. Another model that's available on Thingiverse is a comb. So between prints, if you have any small pieces that fall off into the resin tank, you can use that comb to scrape them out and to get those out of there while you're wasting minimal resin. Now, you want to pull the vat out of the printer while you're doing that, if at all possible, so that you do not drip any resin down through the build plate and onto the Galvo area. Now let's talk a little bit about maintenance. As you can see in the picture there, you have the linear rod and the threaded rod for the Z-axis at the back. There's also the two hinges here on this side for the tilting mechanism. And down below in the front here was the screw or the in the motor that turns the tilting mechanism. Uh, Peel Poly recommends just lubricating those with a 10 weight 30, uh, basically motor oil. Uh, you don't want to use a heavy grease or anything on those, but you do want to make sure that you keep them lubricated. My lubricant of choice is called TriFlow, T-R-I Flow. Um, I believe it was originally developed for using for bicycle parts because it has a tendency to conform to a surface and cling to it and roll down. It's also not harsh on plastics or paints if it gets on those surfaces. And I'll include a link to that on Amazon in the description below if you would like to pick some of that up. Aside from that, there's really not a lot of maintenance that you need to do on the printer itself other than using isopropyl alcohol to occasionally wipe it down. If you do spill or splash any resin, you want to clean that up with IPA as soon as possible. Now the last thing to talk about is to reiterate safety. The Moai did come with a set of green laser glasses and anytime you are working with the printer with the panels off or the doors open and the laser is engaged, you should be wearing those safety glasses. 
so that you're not exposed to the light from the laser. Please keep that in mind. For additional resources, you can always refer back to the Peel Poly website, the same place that we got the build guide that we use for this. There's several other instructional pieces of information there. There's documents on how to slice using the Moai version of Cura. Uh, there's information on how to do more advanced post-processing than what I just showed you and all kinds of other good stuff. There's also a new advanced calibration guide that is going up soon so that if you need increased accuracy out of the printer, you can walk through that to get your X and Y dialed in more precisely. There are also really good resources on the web. There is the PO Poly forums, which you can access through the PO Poly website. And there's also a PO Poly Moai Facebook group. Both of those are full of great community members and everyone seems to be more than willing to help each other out, to share their settings, um, to work especially people that are trying other resins besides the Peel Poly resin. They're willing to share their settings and help people through those trial and error to help speed up the learning process. Admittedly, SLA printing is much different than FDM printing and it is a completely different learning curve. There is a lot that I now actually need to go back and relearn uh, from what I've learned about FDM printing. So there's going to be a pause after we finish up this video while I study up and get some practice and learn more about how to slice for this machine and to, to use it to its full advantage now that it's built. And once we do that, we'll be back with more content on it to help you make the most of your Moai. Um, we'll be doing projects and other tutorials down the road. So I hope you found the entire Moai series useful to you as you were building your printer and as you were just getting started with it. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me via Twitter or Leave a comment down below and I will do my best to get back with you. Or please use those resources I mentioned with the Peel Poly Forum or the Facebook group to help you on your path. With that, if you like what we're doing, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as a new video is out. And with that, I bid you aloha.